In this video, I'm going to show you how to make this glowing shader, as well as this blur shader, which only focuses on a certain part of the image at a time. So let's go. All right, so I've imported the vanilla ice cream picture. So let's make a main scene and let's attach a sprite 2D to that. Next, let's attach this image. On the side here, add a material, new shader material. Click on that. New shader. We can call this glowing shader. Click on that again, and we can edit it inside of here. So the way that shaders work, uh, there's the fragment section, which we can edit things related to the color. And then there's also vertex, but we're not going to mess with that one today. That one is mainly for uh, offsetting positions. So pretty much any time that we work inside of the fragment shader, we always want to set up this part, which is the default color. So this is a VEC4. Uh, you can think of this like a tuple or just an array that has four elements. And we'll call this a lowercase color is equal to, we use the built-in texture function, which takes in something to samples. Uh, we provide the all uppercase texture keyword and this UV. So what this means is texture is the texture here and UV is how that maps onto the sprite itself. So these values go from zero to one, so it's float numbers. So this is just kind of the default of what it shows and we reassign back to the original. So above the fragment section, I'm gonna make a new function. Uh, so if you haven't noticed, this is not really GD script syntax. This is more similar to C sharp or C++ or maybe Java. If we want to make a function that's going to return a Boolean, we specify the return type as the first word. So we use bool for that. We're gonna make a function to detect is something on the edge here. As you saw at the beginning, we wanna make an outline. So we can call this is on border. And instead of indentation, we use curly brackets. So as parameters for this function, let's provide the position that we want to check. So the position that we want to check is going to be a vec2, an array with two elements because it's the x and y position. So we can just call that pause to check. So since we want to use the texture and UV variables from down here, but we can't exactly pass them in straight up here, so what we can do, we can just basically remake them. So we can just say a sampler 2D, and then we can call this texture 2, and same for UV, except UV is a vec2. Let's actually just make this UV. To detect if something's on the border, how can we do that? A special property of things that are on the border, they are next to a pixel that is transparent. So for example, this pixel here, well, it's not next to any transparent pixels, but all of these up here, they are next to the transparent pixels. So we can de detect the spots around the current pixel. So similar to how we use this texture function in Fragment, we can do something similar up here, vec4. So we want to detect the color above us. So we can just say color underscore up. And again, we'll use it texture, the built-in function. Then we want to use the variable that we passed in, which is going to be equivalent to this texture down here. And we'll use UV, but we want to offset that. So to do that, we can just add a vector two. Let's make this a variable that can be changed in the inspector. So to do that with shaders, we use the uniform keyword. And since we want to offset by a vector two, and that's what we want to pass in, so we'll say vector two. And we can call this border threshold. So like how close to the border do we have to be in order to count this? And we can set that to a default value of 0 0.1. We have to use it semicolons. And whoops, this should be vec2. So since we are checking the position above us, we want to use the border threshold, but only the y component. And we also have to make sure we provide some x component because uv is a vec2. We can't just add a uh, float to that. Let's make vec2 and it's a zero. So it's currently complaining because we don't return anything from our statement here. But right now we can just put return false at the bottom just to make it stop complaining. So now we have color up. Let's make color down. So this will be the current pixel below whichever one we're checking. So we just have to change at the end here. We can use a negative order threshold y. 
Now we can do something similar for left and right. Let's copy this line. All right, so we got to swap this around here. So where we had 0.0, .0 take that out. We want to have it negative on the x and then 0 on the y. So negative coordinates means go left. Then we can copy paste that line again. This time for color right. And we can just take out that minus sign. So there's two things that we have to check here. Let's uh, just try one of them first. So we can just check, are we near anything that's transparent? So let's add that. We'll have that be a Boolean. Uh, is next to transparent. So by definition, if we're next to something that's transparent, one of the adjacent coordinates must be a zero on the alpha, or at least it's not one. So we can easily check that here. If we just say if color dot up dot a, that's how we get the alpha component, is a less than one. And because this is a float, you have to make sure to do one dot zero. Otherwise, if you just do one, then it's an int type. So if you're used to GD script, you may or may not have used this before. Um, but to do or here, you have to use double vertical bars on my keyboard that's the button below backspace you hold shift and press it twice so if color up dot a is less than one or uh, let's do color down dot a is less than one or and then just to make this more readable i'll go to the next line we can have color dot left or color dot right so what if we just return this for right now and we can go ahead and save this and let's make sure to put this semicolon at the end of our is next to transparent line so let's see what this does if we implement this back in a fragment. So remember, we just wrote this is on border function. Let's use it inside a fragment. So let's make an if statement. Uh, again, if you're familiar with GD script, it's kind of similar, but you are required to use parentheses here. So if, let's check if we is on border, and we have to provide the position to check, which in this case is just going to be uh, our UV position, because that's how we get our coordinates. And we scroll up here, next we need the texture, and then UV again. So we can provide those, texture, all uppercase, and all caps UV. Actually, we don't even need this pause to check because we already provide that from the UV. So we can just take that out down here. So I mentioned we use this to override the color. So the one that we're overriding is all uppercase color. So if we're on the border, then let's just change our color to be, let's say, red for right now. So we can just say vec4 because we have to provide the RGB and A. That's the red, green, blue, and alpha. So to make this red, we can just do 1.0, 0, 0, and 1. You might notice that's not exactly what we want here. It's made the entire background red. So let's go back up to our is on border. So the reason this happened, we checked if we're next to transparent, but technically all the pixels out here are next to transparent pixels. So to fix that, what we can do, we can check, are we also next to some solid ones? So bool is next to solid, and we can copy what we had here, but instead of making them less than, we can replace all these with equal to. If you happen to have this shortcut set up, uh, I use control D to select the next instance, and then that can just change all of them, or you can just go through and replace all of them manually. So to be on the border, we have to be next to transparent and also next to solid. So we can just return that at the bottom to use and here. Use double ampersand sign. So and is next to solid. And it looks like we misspelled this, so let's correct that. And we need the semicolon at the end. That seems a little bit better. It looks like our threshold is a bit large currently. Uh, here, let's change these to 0, 1 instead. That looks much better. And by default, the color is left the same if we don't modify it. Um, to make that more clear, you can just say color equals color, but that's already done by default. And we want this to be inside of an else part. So again, we use curly brackets and then you know, move this up here. And if you wanted to add in the color changing effect, what we can do is use sine or cosine along with time. So if you provide sine and then all caps time, then we can divide that by do 3.0 and we can add that to let's say 0.3. You can see it's kind of glowing here. Every so often the color changes a bit. Uh, you can mess around with that however you want. We have our glowing shader now and if you want you can adjust the threshold here on the side. You do this trick here. You can 
can make some cool effect where it looks like someone's fading in and out. But if you just want the border to be thicker, then you would adjust both of these values. So we could say 0.5. You can see this does override part of where we had uh, the actual texture. So maybe use this a bit sparingly. Next, let's move on to the blur shader. To do that, let's just make a new sprite 2D. Uh, I recommend not duplicating this one because there's some pass by value versus reference that happens here. Um, that is to say, it can glitch out if you don't do this. So do these individually, and we can reattach this vanilla ice cream picture to this one. I'm going to hide that first sprite that we used, so we're back to just normal vanilla. And if we want to rename it, we can do that, which, by the way, you can set up a keybind for that. That first one we had was the glow shader, and this one is going to be the blur shader. Let's set this up again. So inside of the blur shader, scroll down to the material, new shader material. Let's set this to be a new shader. Call this one blur. Click on it, and let's edit it. And let's just save that glowing one before we wrap it up. So this shader has a lot in common with that previous shader, so maybe we can reuse a bit of our code from that. So first, let's go back to the glowing shader. At the top, we had this border threshold. We can copy this line. So again, remember uniform means we can change it in the inspector. Two means it's a vector two holding two values. This time, let's make the value a blur amount. Let's copy this again. This is the focus point, and we want to focus in the center. So because the values are from zero to one, that's going to be 0 0.5. And we can also have the size of the point that's in focus. So it's like the radius. So let's make another variable for that. Uniform. This time, because it's just a single radius, that's going to be a float value. So we can call this a focus radius. And we can set that to be 0 0.1. Because we're working in the fragment shader again, we're going to reuse that line where we say vec4 color equals a texture. Remember, this just assigns the default color variable to a value that we can edit. And we provide that the texture and the UV. So since the blur effect is made by just taking copies of the image and slightly offsetting them, we can just reuse our code from the glowing shader. Let's copy where we had color up, down, left, and right from the glowing shader and back in the blur shader. Let's put those below where we have this color variable. So we don't have a border threshold here. We have a blur amount. So let's rename these four instances to be blur amount. And since we're just doing this straight in the fragment function, we can change where we had to texture two to be just texture. And these UVs, we can just put all caps UVs, that's a built-in. So texture, UV, and blur amount should all be changed to those now. So making the blur shader is actually really easy. Let's go down here. So first, let's blur everything. So we can just override the color. Say we're going to make it the average of four points around it. So to do that, we can say it's just color up plus color down. The order of these doesn't matter. We're going to use left and right here. So to get average, you just add up all of them and then divide by how many things there were. So we have four values that we're adding up. So we just divide by 4.0. You can see now the image is blurred, but we want to have a single point that's in focus. So to do that, let's go above here. So the point that we want to be in focus, we want it to be within focus radius of the focus point. So we can use an if statement. If so we use a built-in function here called the distance, which as you might guess, gives us the distance between two points, or in this case values, or vec2, vec4, vec3. We want the distance between our focus point and the UV. If that distance is less than the radius, which is our focus radius, then curly brackets, we can say, let's just leave the color on default, and then we can use an else statement, which, by the way, you can either put this like on the same line as the curly brackets, or if you want separate, uh, it's up to you. But just try to be consistent is the important thing. And we need a semicolon. You can see in the center here, uh, it's not blurry, but everywhere else it is. Remember the focus point, this is from 0 to 1. So dot five dot five is the center. If we adjust this inside of the inspector, we can slightly change where we're focusing on. Same in the y direction. If you want to have the focus point move around like I showed earlier, well, we just have to change where we're focusing on. We can do that again using the sine or cosine function. So let's add a vector two to this. 
and we can just get the sign of time and then outside of that parentheses so we're outside of the sign call we can just do divide by 10 you can see it's moving around we want this to be a little bit more maybe you could divide by a smaller value see now it sweeps all the way up here down to here so that is how you make a glow shader and a blur shader if you have questions you can ask below or join the discord make sure to subscribe for more shader videos in the future and i'll see you next time